My name is Art Astrologer Leonardo and some of you know me also under Jayadev Das and in the following I would like to speak about the spiritual background of my work with singers, with people who just break out of a relationship and with couples which are presently in a crisis. Furthermore, this presentation will deal with my vision of a love clinic on the island of Madeira, Mauritius and Bali, where I plan to work in cooperation with spa and wellness hotels and would serve together with a little team of vegetarian Vedic cooks yoga teachers and a public relationship manager who is simultaneously also a caretaker and will take people to tours into the nature. So the vision goes like this, that we plan to organize retreats and healing workshops for these kind of love-stricken people. But let me now tell you how this was coming all about. 2007 I started on advice of an astrological colleague to work with enterprises who give advisors a platform, a portal for online consultation which happens over phone and internet. Suddenly I was confronted with the reality of the ocean, of the broken hearts, from which existence I did not know earlier to that extent which I know it's existing today. To bring it to the point, the problem of this ocean is that instead of meeting on the platform of real knowledge, mutual respect, and care towards the beloved person and responsibility. People start nowadays relationships in ignorance about the further development of that relationship without understanding the destination of the relationship and the meaning of the relationship. The mistake is that most people oversee that it might be only a volatile attraction or they might decide for a partner out of superficial motives like prestige and more security. Then often the rest of the story is history because already 40% of romances in the West end in a situation of a single parent, either single mother or single father. Obviously the percentage of the single fathers are a bit lower. And as I could analyze the weaknesses of a relationship in a few minutes on telephone, the consultants were surprised by my quick analysis on the basis of Vedic astrology. And already 2011 and 2012, as I was touring and giving classes, my regular customers asked me to publish a book about this subject matter, which was happening actually now in the year 2017. Unfortunately, this book, The Optimum Relationship, is at least until now only in German language available. In this book, I give a definition of the astrological preposition which will lead to long-lastingness in a relationship. Furthermore, I discuss in the second part of the book 
about the seven points of a functioning relationship. However, in this video clip, more likely I want to concentrate on the spiritual background of my work and explain the deep philosophy behind it. I intend to reveal that actually this project is mixed with devotional service and that it is furthermore a little humble personal contribution to the missing 50% of the incomplete mission of His Divine Grace Sri Prabhupada. Because when Sri Prabhupada left this planet, he said that 50% of my mission are fulfilled and that it is now on his followers to creatively establish the missing 50% in mutual cooperation and love. With other words, I see it like this, that this service was coming to me, was sent to me to give me the possibility to fulfill a little, little, little space in this unlimited, gigantic, great ocean of service which has to be managed before we are living in a more peaceful God or Krishna conscious society. Before I dive deeper into my vision of a love school, therapy center, clinic, I want to go deeper into the philosophical background of the project. Out of a spiritual perspective, the marriage life is actually made for purification of the ego. Now it's a very fascinating fact that if you watch over the different kind of religions, they might actually have a lot of discrepancies. However, they might argument about this point or that point, but if we come to a sanctified marriage, all of a sudden all these different religions have the same opinion that a sanctified, long-lasting relationship is an essential part of life and fast-moving changes of partners will have a fatal effect on the spiritual life, on the well-being, on the health. Now it is another fact that only the privileged bhakti yogis are aware about the esoteric truth that all couples in this world are in the end all perverted imitations of the divine couple. We are made after God, means God has a head, we have a head. God has two hands, we have two hands. God has two legs, we have two legs. And as God was becoming in the indescribable eternal time too, was expanding himself as Purusha, the enjoyer and the enjoyed, we, his pass and parcels, also appear in a conditioned form as man and woman. God in the Vedic understanding is never alone because he relishes exchange. To understand this reflection concept a little bit deeper, I want at this point quote the analogy of saintly Bhagavad Gita, 15th chapter. Here it is said, the blessed Lord said, there is a banyan tree which has its root upward and its branches down and whose leaves are the Vedic hymns. One who knows this tree is the knower of the Vedas. The branches of this tree extend downward and upward, nourished by the three modes of material nature. The twigs are the objects of the senses. This tree also has roots going down and these are bound 
two fruitive actions of human society. The real form of this tree cannot be perceived in this world. No one can understand where it ends, where it begins or where its foundation is. But with determination one must cut down this tree with the weapon of detachment. So doing one should seek that place from which having once gone one never returns and there surrender to that supreme personality of Godhead from whom everything has begun and in whom everything is abiding since time immemorial. One who is free from illusion, false prestige and false association who understands the eternal, who is done with material lust and is freed from the duality of happiness and distress and who knows how to surrender unto the Supreme Person attains that eternal kingdom. That abode of mine is not illuminated by the sun or a moon nor by electricity. One who reaches it never returns to this material world. The living entities in this conditioned world are my eternal fragmental parts. Due to conditioned life, they are struggling very hard with the six senses which include the mind. Here I stop to quote and want to summarize that important information. For deep thinkers, the secret why a balanced, regulated, sanctified life and why lasting relationships are so important to be cultivated is revealed here. The Supreme do good here to give the analogy of a banyan tree which characteristic is that he has a lot of twigs. He gives this picture to make clear that in his original eternal world there is variety. The same as we know in this world there are places and planets also in the original spiritual world there are places called lokas. However, the Lord gives here the information that these eternal lokas places don't need electricity. Everything and everybody is shining out of himself, so no sun is needed to enlighten that place and also no moon. And as the spiritual planets are floating in the spiritual sky in the eternal time, God rules every of this planet in a different eternal form like for example Rama, Buddha, Nishinga Dev and many other forms which originally expand out of the law form of God. So on the absolute top of all these Lokas and all these spiritual planets there is one eternal planet which is called Krishna Loka. Indeed Krishna in another very important Vedic scripture known as Brahma Samhita describes himself as Sava Karana Karanam which means he is the original source without having a source himself. This form of an eternal youthful boy playful with a peacock feather in his hair and a flute residing with his eternal extension Radharani in the center of the spiritual world makes clear that also in the spiritual world the love form and love is supreme. But as the 15th chapter of Bhagavad Gita speaks about detachment and good qualities it becomes clear that what in the spiritual world is variety, in its reflection you can visualize a banyan tree in a lake for example 
becomes entanglement, confusion. With other words, the totally transcendental love between the divine couple transform into this material world as a perverted reflection. Pure love falling into the mud of time and space still creates a taste which everybody is hankering for and is ambitious to work. Now let's dive one step deeper in to this secret. The speciality in the love between Radha and Krishna is that in their eternal Leela, in their eternal game, they are actually an unmarried, youthful couple. Also it has to be noted that in the heart of the spiritual world, on the peak of the spiritual world, God is not any more worshipped in awe and reverence. Furthermore, the very privileged souls, they are living in a second transcendental illusion by which they are thinking that the Lord is one of them. In this Yoga Maya, this illusion, they are just thinking the Lord is very, very important and the attention of his greatness and power is totally swept off their consciousness. Sweetness is standing over awe and reverence. In this environment of second illusion, the Lord, by his own sweet will, creates a transcendental drama by which he is in another expansion, a transcendental shadow form called Abhimanyu, the eternal husband of his counterpart Shemati Radharani. With other words, in his original form, Krishna, he betrays himself and meets with his beloved in the midst of the forest in Vrindavan, the eternal village, in the night, and this is called technical Parakiras or Madhurya Lila. And now take care, also in the perverted Banyan tree version we know of the night as the moment where lovers can celebrate if regulated or deviate and if not careful degenerate the most when diving into the perverted taste. This double love reality by which Shimata Radharani is committed or married to one person but indeed thinks constantly about another person in her heart is in the Leela, in the version of the Lord, just a playful and innocent game which he and his eternal consort are enjoying with transcendental pleasure and fun. However, in this material world reflection, this double love develops to the greatest poison and the most dangerous pitfall possible for the conditioned souls. A mind which is caught by this double love situation got bewildered in a way that the person degenerates more and more and yoga and real spiritual life becomes something like a Fata Morgana. As I, as an astrologer, lectured about the point of Vedic matchmaking, I used to ask the audience in the beginning of the lecture who of you had already the experience of a broken heart. Usually more than 50% raised their hand. Then I asked, who of you were already in a committed relationship and all of a sudden a person came through the door which you were more attracted and felt you have more karma with, more destiny than with your current partner. Even though not that much people raised their hand to confirm having experienced that situation everyone wholeheartedly approved to understand the danger of such an experience. Mm -hmm.
And exactly this is the reason why on Vedic standard, knowledge is the first pillar of love in this world. Only if by astrological knowledge of real ascertainment, destiny, a compatibility was approved to be sustainable over 10, 20, 30, 50 years, the blessing to a marriage proposal was given. So whenever I speak about the four pillars of love, like first knowledge, then respect, care about the person and responsibility, People reflect, respect, care and responsibility we can follow. But why you are putting knowledge as the first on the list? Yes, because without real deep knowledge, developing and maintaining respect, care and responsibility become almost impossible, a force or at least a big struggle and suffering in the end. And then it's only a matter of time that a situation of temptation towards the double love appears on the screen which will lead, as it develops, to a really hellish emotional state of inner bewilderment, suffering and deviation from the path of righteousness. On the end of this road people get emotionally destroyed and unable to regain trust and hope in life. Herewith I have explained in short secret mission behind my work with singers, fresh broken up relationship cases and couples in a crisis. It is the fight against the perverted parakiras from the spiritual world which let me feel that this service has a great meaning and it is something worth to even die for. I always looked for a service which I can burn for and if I could see in this life the beginning of a tiny little center where I could catch up relationship stricken people to have enlightenment about their own individual emotional life and destiny combined with a training camp to learn a more aesthetic way to relate to a you all together then this would make me very happy. Included in this training program would be of course also kirtan, prayers and mantras and exercises by which we start to understand our real position as servants. Because on the spiritual level there's only one enjoyer. In our relationship to God we are all feminine, which means we are the enjoyed, whereas the Lord is the only Purusha, the only enjoyer. And on the material plane we try to be both as man and as woman in the reflection paradise to be the enjoyer, which finally at the end also leads to inner emptiness, bluntness and separation. I thank you, dear listener and watcher of this video clip, that you was following me until here. Please pray for me, for us, that we can start with a little team to organize these trainings inside of the context of a happiness school in the alternative tourism branch. The starting on holiday islands could be exemplary, because nowadays at home people are more and more bound in a stressful routine and only once in a while see their life in greater perspective while they are booked a flight towards the mountains or towards the seaside. In the surrounding of peace, nature and in good association they will rapidly understand their latest sidetracked deviations in their life. And with the map of Vedic astrology and the understanding of their individual planetary dasha periods, they will fly clarified and start back home to face their challenges at home. Thank you for your attention, yours Art Astrologer Leonardo. Jaya Diftas.